Hello everyone, here's a Goblet of Fire set from the Lego Harry Potter line. It's the Bobaton Carriage Arrival at Hogwarts set, or as the actor for Dumbledore pronounced it, Bobaton Lesai. I'm going to start things off with a look at the four minifigures here, which are of four different sizes. I can't quite put a finger on why, but I really like this Finest Threads version of Hagrid with the tie and the furry coat. I don't know, I just feel like it has a, a little bit more personality to look at the figure on the whole than the standard getup for him. And this uses the most recent version of his body and also the wide arms there. And he has a couple of, of uh, paddles there for directing air traffic coming in to land. Taking a look underneath here, his face without all the facial hair is interesting. And that also lets you see the rest of the print for his torso. There's no additional print around the back. Madame Maxime is appropriately a bit taller than Hagrid and has a really good print going down the front and back of the torso as well as the exclusive printed tall slope piece there. So that's actually pretty, uh, pretty continuous all the way through, lines up pretty well and is just uh, yeah, is produced pretty well. She also has an alternate face. And then here are the sisters, Fleur Delacour. Actually, John, it's Fleur Delacour. And Gabrielle. These have the same uh, new hair pieces, hair and hat pieces together, dual molded, and also the same torsos, which is appropriate because they are supposed to be in uniform. Got the nice dual molded legs there on the left, short child style legs on the right. I know that nowadays a lot of people prefer to always see the mid-sized legs being used just because you can articulate them, you can move them around. But I personally still see the value of having the smallest possible legs to really accentuate the difference in size between different characters. And these have the same prints around the backs of the torsos, of course, and they have different alternate faces. So singing for one and sleeping for the other. And I really like the, the uh, printed sealed letter there which is against tan, you know, just something a little bit more classy, a little bit older than the male piece, so one of the male pieces that they've been using for quite a long time that's on a white tile. The carriage build is really nice and uses some interesting techniques, nothing too, too fancy, but just, I don't know, I feel like a lot of the stuff was unexpected, how different parts are connected together. You want to see a real surprise? <laughs> That is a wall, an impenetrable wall. It's, uh, it has a little bit of upside down building there. It has some of the, the interesting techniques with recent pieces. But yeah, there's no ingress, egress right there. Interesting. Lots of stickers are used for the decorative elements. And I think that's perfectly appropriate. Uh, because like, for instance, this has to be different than this. That's different than that. It just wasn't worth them investing into that many new part numbers for all the different parts that need to be decorated here. And if you if you absolutely detest stickers, just leave those off. There's still plenty of small detail, different texture, different shaping in here that I think it'll still look very good. I like what they did with the suspension as well. It, it looks semi-realistic, almost as if there's, almost as if these, uh, these axles are actually suspended out the back. It's just some unnecessary stuff that adds to the believability of this, I think. Uh, you've got a trunk back here, which has part of a tea set. So some tea cups in there for mini figs. Those are nice to see. We don't have enough of those in circulation just yet. They're just in plain white, but I think they're very good. And uh, there's another one inside as well. I like how these angle out. I don't even know the, the proper term for these, these elements in, in real life. But, you know, they're just angled out a little bit, which adds a little bit more life to this, makes it feel even less rectangular. Notice that there are two different colors of pearl gold right there. That's the old pearl gold on the left, new pearl gold on the right. Lego is still in the process of switching over from one to the other. And that will just continue on for a while until all of the old gold is gone. I think the newer gold is much better. Nice lanterns around the sides, a little bit. A little bit fussy anytime that you touch this if you touch those they're going to get misaligned either front to back or side to side and then they just don't look right and uh you know, if you notice details it'll, it'll bug you until you get it just right where they're 
they're vertical so they look like they're actually hanging like they're supposed to now on this side this is where you can actually open the thing up so that's that's some proper space for a, a figure to go in and out uh, you can pose a figure in in a doorway but it's too bad that they don't give you any steps or like a little ladder or something to be able to retract and put down here so that you could actually have the arrival proper you know have figures coming down from the carriage i think that's a little bit of a miss that it wouldn't have taken too many pieces to correct and coming around the other side there's space for another trunk there if you have an extra part you can also stand a figure there uh kind of i think it has to be one of the shorter figures uh actually this will this will fit an adult size figure will just fit there depending upon what they have for headgear uh, i don't think that's even necessary or anything uh, the animals know how to pilot this just fine but uh, you can rotate the front axle side to side and also this whole harness goes up and down so it gives you a little bit of flexibility when i saw the first reveal pictures of this set i didn't like this right here and i still don't like that right there it just looks very uh unfinished and uh just incorrect to me it just doesn't feel right maybe if he was tiled over a little bit or if there's just a little bit of angle here in the corners that would help but the spacing is correct i think the spacing is as it needs to be for these you know to have enough room you can still see the the wings are overlapping but at least this way you can pose them in good ways with them uh, alternating in the the wing stroke up and down or have one up have one can even be completely all the way out I'm just accidentally dislodging it a bit there but you know this can be all the way out like that this is the the old uh, uh, hair uh, hair the old horse mold or a set of molds which uh, it doesn't look as bad or as out of date as I would expect. It's a, a good print that they have for the harnesses on these. And these wings are just so beautiful. It's, it's an absolutely magnificent design that's useful for realistic and also fanciful flying things. And these are just in plain white. I, I love just how flowing they are. Lots of compound curves there. Just a really great piece. And, of course, you can remove these. And they actually do include in this set an extra pair of one by two white plates to take up the space used here. So, you know, you can fill up that gap so you don't have the little bit of gap. So you can have these just flying freely if you want. And they are able to rear up as well. Now, the Harry Potter series is written by a British storyteller. So naturally you have a small enclosed object. It's going to be much larger on the inside than it is on the out. And to accommodate that in Lego form, they let you open all of this up. And it's basically a one step transformation process, which is actually pretty nice. It would be lovely to have uh, some some walls to bring down on the sides here. But I think this is pretty classy and pretty well done. So you've got the beds upstairs, which don't even open up. You know, that's that's literally the roof of the place. You're just seeing the pillows appear. You've got some studs out here so you can attach figure, well, adult sized figure, uh, regular legs to the back of that if, if you want. Basically, one of the figures in this set will fit there and the others will just, you know, lay down. And yeah, you've got, even got some furniture. I mean, this is the nicest thing, how this is done. Leaving enough space for the hinge in there. Uh, there's, there's upside down buildings so that when this is flipped over, the drawers are actually right side up. You can put the letter in there if, if you want. It's just pretty nicely detailed. I can also let these now angle down somewhat. I don't know, I think I'll just leave them up. I think, I think it looks fine like that. But yeah, this is... Uh, I think it's nice. I think there's a nice amount of, of magic to this, and it doesn't need too much more to, to be realistic. I think that this this strikes the right balance between uh, trying to depict, depict things as they're supposed to be in-universe and having just a reasonable build that's, again, easy to transform and also looks pretty good and has space on the inside still that's preserved. You can see that this wall here is basically just a single brick thick. Uh, it's the same as on the other side. There's actually a little bit more room afforded on this side than the other side's build because this side has the arches 
to give it a little extra strength there. So you can put figures in there and it, it all works out pretty well. You can also stand figures here. No studs though, uh, which is good and bad. Uh, the bad is that you can't get figures to stay to stay exactly where you want them to be. The good is that you can put figures wherever you want them to be. And then here's the additional teacup and also a kettle that is dark azure right there. And the rest of this lighter blue color is the light royal blue. And that's pretty much it for this set. Here are the other pieces of the set. I already mentioned the two one by twos to finish up the animals if you separate them away from the carriage. This is just a bottle for Hagrid and my set actually did include an extra one of these wonderful teacups. I don't know if that was supposed to be there, if every set is going to come with an extra. I certainly hope so. And you only have one extra uh, wand. By far the most redeeming feature of this set is the design and build of the carriage, which is good because that's the main thing that you're paying for here. This is $50 US at a suggested retail price. I personally feel like it should be more like 40 based on the amount of stuff. Yeah, 40, that's about as far as I'll go with it. I think, I think 40 is about, about reasonable. It's definitely possible and not even that difficult to defend the price of this if you just want to take that stance if you really like everything that you see here. I mean, we do have a couple of larger than normal figures or specialized and then also a couple of animals plus the wings and everything. Uh, so, you know, those always add to, to value relative to what you would expect from a price to part ratio perspective. But just, just to me, you know, I'm just, I'm always going to tell you what, what I think based on what I see. Uh, purely subjectively and of course separate that out from any objective analysis but uh, I I don't I don't quite see fifty dollars worth of value here myself but uh, if if you want if you really want this and you end up paying 50 you're not getting ripped off it is a good set and it has good figures good features and good display value with the exception of just this thing here which I think needs a little bit of work if you want to see the entire build process, including the interesting ways that some of the parts of the carriage are put together, you can see my real-time pure build or the sped up speed build. I'll link you to both of those right now and talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bonjour! Uh, bonjour. He's a French model. Actualis Jean c'est fleur de la cour. Actualis Jean et fleur de la 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 la